Hey, welcome back to our show. This is the second episode on the saw orbis for the slitting saws. The first part we turned the, the orbis themselves, one for 8mm and one for 10mm, and we talked briefly about slitting saws and um, wheel cutters. And this time we need to machine the screw, the shoulder bolt that that holds and aligns the saw blades on the arbor and also we have to do uh, milling operations on the arbor and some drilling on the shoulder bolt. So I have some material here, let's go to the lathe and get started. Okay, I turned the first screw off camera and this is the 10mm one and it fits the saw blades very good. Very nice close fit. Um, the diameter on it is pretty good, pretty close to 10 millimeters. And as with the Orbis themselves, the screw head, the bolt head is is relieved on the inside. It's a bit hard to see on camera maybe. But you might be able to see it that the inner area here is recessed back in. And that's that has two reasons. One reason is that the, the lathe tool bit always has a little radius and with the radius in the corner the saw blade couldn't rest against the shoulder and by um, relieving the inner, the screw only clamps on its outer diameter and that gives uh, a more firm grip on the saw blade. And that's, uh, that's, that's a proper way to do it. Um, I, the, the thread is single pointed because I wanted it to uh, run true with the, with the bolt itself. Okay, the part is already clamped in the three char chuck with enough stick out and I'm trying a new camera position here at the moment right above the tailstock and I can do this only because I don't need the tailstock for this piece. Um, but I but I might build if this works out I might build a stand for the camera that can clamp to the shelf. Um, because that way the camera is not in the way when I do my machining and on the other hand you have a free line of sight to the tool and the workpiece. Um, normally I have the camera in front of the lathe and I have to work around the, the tripod and the camera and that's uh, <laughs> it's not that much fun and a bit, it's really hard to film that way. Um, with this setup I have full access to the machine and you also see what's happening. Okay, I left about 0.5 millimeters on this bigger diameter, which needs to be a pretty close fit. We will machine that to 8 millimeters minus one or two hundredths of a millimeter. Um, but first, we're going to. Oh, first we turn the outer diameter. This is going down to 19 millimeters. It's 20 millimeter material and. I want to skim cut the other diameter to 19. Okay, now we cut the thread relief with the 2mm parting blade. Thank you. 
I'm cutting the thread relief to the minor diameter of the thread. A 6mm thread with a 1mm pitch has of course a 5mm minor diameter. There we go. Now we chamfer the edges. Okay, now we're ready to do our threading. We have the minor diameter here machined to uh, to slightly under six millimeters. We have the shoulder roughed to 8.5 and we have the other diameter machined. Everything's chamfered, we have our thread relief and now we can single point the 6mm thread. Of course that's a good opportunity to use my better threading gauge to set up the threading tool. There's a video on this. Most of you might have seen it um, where I make this, this better threading gauge with the V cutout on front and the, the setting sur uh, setup surfaces for the threading tool. I did a few passes and we should be pretty close to a to a fitting thread. Um, the, the relief on back here is pretty short so I have to go slow on the RPM and um, you notice that I leave the um, you have not of the carriage engaged all the time. That's the way how threading is teached in Europe, as it seems. Uh, I have never seen people around here um, opening and closing the half knots during threading. And we're still a bit. At the nut wants to go on, but doesn't. But we will get closer. Uh, I one day I will get proper thread gauges, plug gauges, and um, ring gauges for external threads. Because using a nut is a bit is not <laughs> how you do it. That's a bit. And with the VDF, I have of course very low speed and pretty good control what's happening. I could even go slower. or go faster on the retract or on the return. There we go. That's, oh no, yeah, that's yeah, that's a, a nice tight thread. Doesn't doesn't wiggle much. I'm happy no. <laughs> I won't do anything to this thread anymore. This is this is as good as it gets in my shop. Um, yeah, that's the single point threading. Not too exciting. When I first got a lathe, single point threading was the 
the evil. I avoided it wherever possible and then I had to make ports with uh, M a 40 millimeter thread, one millimeter pitch and I couldn't, I was only single pointing it because such a big die nut is uh, not practical. And I did a test piece and it worked beautifully and since then I, I pretty much enjoy single point threading. It's, it's a nice process, it gives great results when you do it proper and it's really not that hard. Okay, now we cut this diameter down to 8 millimeters, close fitting to the arbor and we will relieve this face. First we start with the diameter. Okay, and I'm using a freshly honed high-speed steel tool and you saw the nice neat chip coming off there. Uh, let's take a measurement and we are at 8.16. So we take a 800 small meter cut, take another measurement and do the final cut. Okay, and nine hundreds to go. And now we're doing the undercut. Okay, now we have the diameter finished and we undercut the face. Let's take your last measurement. <laughs> Doesn't get much better than this. Um, we will rub, give it a rub with some fine emery cloth to polish the surface, but that's pretty close. There we go. That's that should be a nice finished uh, shoulder bolt. Let's see if it fits. Oh, yep. There we go. And the thread also fits. And we're in. And the screws are nice and tight. That's that's as as tight as I would possibly go. A, a bit more tight than it would be. Uh, really hard to move it by hand so uh, I call this pretty perfect and now we have to part it off and you saw me covering the lathe bed while I was doing the sanding and filing I also rounded over the end of the thread with the file because it makes just for a nice support of course it's not necessary, but it gives just a, a nice appearance. <laughs> and as I said in another video, it makes the part look like somebody cared about it. Now we're going to part it off. 2, 3, 3.5.
There we go. Okay, let's not drop it into the chip pan, just break it off. <laughs> yeah, break it off. Um, yeah. Okay, let's break it off. Um, and of course the surface from the parting tool is not very good, so we have to face it anyway to thickness on this side. Okay, let's do the back side of the of this shoulder bolt. Uh, and for this operation uh, we don't have to indicate the part in or something like that because it's a non-functional surface. But as we're clamping on a function surface we don't crank down on the three jaw like crazy. Okay, we take a light facing cut, measure it and uh, do an adjustment for the final thickness of this head. Okay, let's take a measurement. And we have 3.18. We adjust for final thickness. Of course we want a nice radius on the corner, also for the appearance. You could also chamfer it, but the radius uh, makes for a more professional look. There we go. Okay, let's give the surface a light polish with emery cloth. Careful. And we do work that close to the chuck. Um, be extra, extra, extra careful, or better. Don't do it any or anyways. There we go. Looks okay. It's not not brilliant, but the important surface are very good. Okay, we're over at the milling machine, and we want to um, to mill two flats onto these arbors, so we can hold them with a wrench. And we're going to hold them in this ER25 color block. And I wanted to show this to you. I made this some time ago. I didn't film it. There's no video on it and um, not very much pictures. But I'll show it. Um, this block takes standard ER25 colors. And how it works, this is the nut, which has, this is hardened and ground, by the way. This is where I used my tool post grinder the first time for real. And so you see the surface finish I got here, it's pretty good. And it has an internal taper, also ground, which fits the ER collet. And back here is a fine thread. The collet block itself, when you look down in there, it has the matching taper, the, the front taper of the collet, turned in there. This block is pre-hardened tool steel and this internal taper is turned. Then it's bored to fit this diameter very close. And then there's the fine thread to clamp it all together and how it works, you just Put everything into each other, which fits very closely. 
<laughs> almost to a point, point where it binds. <coughs> and then, then you just tighten it down. And we have, of course, holes in there to tighten it down with a, with a pin punch. Um, what else? The surfaces, the outer or the square is machined true to the bore so you can flip this any direction the bore is always in the same uh, the axis of the workpiece that's clamped in here is always in the same direction pretty neat piece um, I know of course um, there are five C color blocks which which are very common and very cheap to buy but five C collets are I don't have them they are not that common here in Germany um, and this this is the next this is my solution for this problem and there are also ER25 colored blocks to buy but they have the nut in front here and I don't like it they look ugly and the nut is always in the way so let's insert the part and sometimes, of course, when you push in the part, you, you push the collet in the taper and then it binds up, so you have to push in from the back side with something. So, yeah, now we can tighten it down. and do our machining and we're going to use a two flute bull nose cutter high speed steel and I hand ground the edge radius on here um, I did this some quite some time ago and um, it's just freehand freehanded the radius on the grinder and then relieved it on the back like a drill works works very good um, the radius is only for appearance in this case and to avoid a sharp uh, transition from flat to another flat, which is always good to have a small radius in there. And this is the cutter we're going to use. Okay, and here for the setup, we have the colored block with the arbor and drop it onto a pair of parallels. So the auto diameter is above the, um, above the chuck jaws. And I have my work stop against the face of the arbor, like this. Now we clamp it down and now we take our cut. So take our part, flip it around. Set it up against the stop and clamp it down. And we do the second side as before, as the first one. Okay, there we go, that was the second flat. Uh, now we can take it out and see if we did well. Okay, and the 13 millimeter wrench fits very nice. A bit of air, as it should have. Um, and I chose a 13 millimeter wrench because this is the size wrench I have everywhere in the shop and almost every machine because this is the size for an 8mm screw and all my hold down tooling is 8mm thread with 13mm um, uh, uh, um, size. Okay, finally we're going to drill these two holes into the bolt so we can tighten them down with the wrench 
that I made for the bigger cell Orbis quite some time ago. It's, it's nice when you can use the same wrench for different tooling, so you don't have to hunt for different uh, wrenches in the shop all the time. So this is already done. I'm just drilling these, no need to ream them. Um, I want the pins to, to go in um, lightly, so it doesn't bind up on me. Okay, and we're just drilling so we can just drop the piece in the vise um, yeah, and clamp it lightly. We're only drilling, so no heavy machining involved there. Okay, let's drill these holes. I'm using the 120 degree starter drill, spotting drill. And follow with a 3mm twist drill. And we're using the new and improved Precision depth stop of the milling machine. I'm setting the depth stop to 3 millimeters with the new depth stop uh, with a 3 millimeter gauge block. There we go. And we're drilling. Okay, and there we have it. We have both of the um, the shoulder bolts with their spanner holes, so we can tighten them. And they fit into their arbors. And can be tightened down quite nicely. So, there we go. Precision saw orbus, hopefully. Oh, and we're going to clean up these milled surfaces slightly because they look a bit, yeah, the, uh, the surface finish is not, uh, yeah. Let's uh, go to the bench and remove them. Okay, uh, we're going to use some some 400 grit emery paper which I rip which is easily um, to be ripped in small strips and I rip them to a width of a needle file flat needle file and just do it like this now we have an emery file and now we can just work down these surfaces by hand and also break the edges lightly of the milled uh, areas. And this goes pretty fast. The 400 grit is pretty fine uh, grit but uh, it's still very fast cutting as, in, as you can see the surface got got very good very fast so let's do it also on this surface break the edges And for the edge breaking, sometimes the bare file is uh, better. There we go. Cleaned up quite nicely. Let's do the other one. Okay, over at the milling machine and I have a uh, 30 millimeter saw blade in there. 32 millimeter. 0.5 millimeter thick and we will check the runout, the axial runout of the saw blade because um, radii, radial runout is not very critical with saw blades. Um, they just make a funny noise when you use them. They make every revolution because not every teeth is cutting. Um, but what causes problems if is the, if they wobble, 
Then you get your cut is running away and you end up with a broken saw blade and uh, somebody starts to cry and um, you don't get the job done. So uh, look out for the um, for the uh, axial runout of your saw blades. And I clamped it in the 12 millimeter collet and disengaged the drive of the mill so I can freely turn it. And now we bring up the, the dial test indicator to the face of the saw blade. It should be in frame. Yes, that looks good. And now we can spin our spindle and as you can see we have barely barely 100 slough millimeter um, wobble in the saw blade and that's that's what you want for a good result when you're using uh, slitting saws um, I was also asked about speeds and feeds with saw blades um, speed you calculate it like every regular end mill. Uh, you have your diameter, you have your cutting speed, your uh, surface speed. Um, for example, with high speed steel on mild steel, you run it at about 25 meters per minute uh, surface feet or cutting speed. And that gives us, let's do the math, we have uh, 25 meters per minute uh, surface speed, we have a tool diameter of 32 millimeters and that gives us a speed of 240 rpm. Uh, 240 rpm. This mill has um, 180 and 300, so we cho cho choose the lower one because we don't want to burn it up, so we go to low 2. And that's the proper speed for this slitting saw in mild steel. And as for feed, when you're hand feeding them, you kind of feel when, when uh, the saw blade is taking a, a good enough cut. If you have a saw blade with bigger gullets, you can feed them pretty aggressively, even, especially when they get bigger in diameter and have, uh, are, are quite beefy. Then you can feed them quite aggressively into the material and uh, really remove some stock with them. So. Let's do a test cut with this. Okay, let's say we want to saw off the head from the screw. No worries using the quill there because the cutting forces from the small slitting saw, especially as it's that thin, is really low. Okay, um, with the first cut we saw right through the head of the screw. And lubrication really helps with these There you go, that's a slice of screw head and it's gone. And you, you, saw, you saw that I could feed, that I did feed the saw blade pretty fast into the material and we will take a second uh, pass, we will cut off the whole head of the screw. Just because we can. <laughs> Ruining a perfectly good screw for the sake of video. There we go. 
You can also use these to cut uh, sheet metal. Works also very good. Okay, let's say you want a strip, a narrow strip of sheet metal. Example, uh, this is one millimeter brass, and you need a narrow strip that has straight edges. You could shear it, but with a shear you uh, ruin the edges. Um, and especially when you're prototyping sheet metal parts, um, <laughs> you, you, you want proper edges on your um, material. It's, it sucks when you have to work with uh, rounded or bent over edges from a shear. So um, using the sealing saw you get pretty good, uh, pretty nice material. It doesn't, doesn't get bent and so on and so on. We'll take two cuts. First cut, very nice, very nice edge, very clean cut, didn't, didn't walk away like we expect from a proper tool. Um, and now we, s let's say we need a, a, a material about this width. And with such light cuts you can even clump, climb cut with the saw blade. Uh, I would not recommend this doing with bigger wheel cutters on a manual milling machine because uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, try it yourself. It's, um, it's not going to be good. But uh, with such a small saw blade you can climb cut on a conventional milling machine even uh, if you have backlash in your feet screw. So one neat strip of sheet metal cut with the slitting saw from a piece of sheet metal. And now we can proceed you can proceed on and make your prototype part that later might be get a, a stamped piece or something like that out of a tool, but uh, for the prototyping you need accurate material. So I think these saw blade arbors I made just are quite nice and they work like a treat. Um, so thank you for watching, see you next time.